I was very proud for eight years to have presented HMRC, Her Majesty in Revenue and Customs, dynamic business advice open days, and for a good number of years presented roadshows over the UK for UK trade and investment. So I'm passionate about selling the UK overseas and totally believe our way forward to bounce ahead post-COVID and Brexit is to get selling globally. But, and I know this from the thousands of businesses I met on the HMRC and UKTI tours, it is fear of the unknown and bafflement of regulations that holds businesses back from seizing the export opportunity. Today, I hope to help you make that exciting world of export a whole lot easier as we visit the unique business that is called the Customs People and meet David Miller. Good morning, David. Hello, nice to see you. Good morning, Malcolm. Yes, it's nice to see you as well, and thank you for inviting me on. My pleasure. David, tell me about yourself and about the Customs People. Uh, well, thank you, Malcolm. Yes, my name's David Miller. I'm the director of the Customs People. Um, my background is I was a, a HMRC uh, inspector for both customs and VAT for about 11 years. And I became a, a customs and VAT consultant uh, 21 years ago uh, with our firm. Uh, and the brand name is the Customs People. And our reason to be is to try and help businesses make sense of anything to do with customs. So it's importing and exporting and make the most of any opportunities that exist uh, to save money. Excellent. Okay. So really so add value. <laughs> if um, I know it's early in the morning, but if that B word Brexit does fully happen this year, how do you see the post Brexit paperwork and regulation situation for exporters, both in terms of challenges and opportunities? Well, Malcolm, in terms of uh, challenges, uh, whenever we leave uh, uh, the EU, whether it's at the end of 2020 or whether it's some later date, if there is an extension, uh, every business uh, exports will need. Uh, to be aware of uh, customs paperwork, which will be required at the moment to move goods to the EU. There is no, uh, it's all commercial paperwork, there's no customs paperwork required. There will be in some format customs paperwork uh, needed to be lodged uh, with HMRC. Um, post uh, period, this is understanding the challenges of what, what they require. A lot of the information they will already hold uh, because they do have a thing called interest app. Uh, and in terms of opportunities, an opportunity really to go out and sell to the world, uh, whilst there might be some regulation in terms of uh, what's required, it will actually give the business opportunities to, to be more efficient. So it's, uh, um, it, it, there are changes, nobody likes changes, but uh, there will be uh, additional paperwork which everybody needs to be aware of. Okay, and I'm sure that's where the customs people will be able to help. But where do you think the grey areas are that need to be clarified to give businesses confidence in going for exporting? I think there are a number of areas which need clarifying. The first one is uh, whether there will be a free trade agreement or not. Uh, at the moment, there's a lot of talk around whether that will be in place by the end of the year. Uh, that's important that, that we need clarity on that because that will affect uh, the costs for UK businesses in, in exporting. Uh, in, in other words, going into Europe, what duty uh, may or may not be payable on, uh, on, on UK uh, source goods. So we need some clarity around that. We also need some clarity in terms of uh, are there going to be any simplifications around being able to import and export, particularly export into Europe. Uh, there are several mechanisms uh, which do allow uh, simplifications, things like authorised economic status, status. Uh, the moment those specific uh, requirements haven't really been fleshed out. Uh, we, we hope they will be in due course, but they've not been fleshed out. So th th there's real, some real clarity needed around uh, the actual uh, how uh, we will trade with Europe, uh, and hopefully we'll get that in, in the coming months. But uh, I wouldn't surprise me if, it, if it's later this year before that those uh, are actually known. Yeah, I might have to hold you to that, David, you know, <laughs> that clarification period. <laughs> so which sectors do you Absolutely. see will be, uh, yeah, which sectors do you see will be most challenged post-Brexit? Uh, I, I, you know, do you think the UK may lose its competitiveness and productivity as a result of the hard push for Brexit? I think uh, if there's no free trade agreement and there's no extension to the transition period, which uh, the Prime Minister seems uh, 
seems dead set against. Uh, there will be some challenges in a number of sectors, manufacturing, uh, because obviously the UK, what you know, we want to manufacture, we want to sell goods to the rest of the world. But if there's additional duties uh, on importing into Europe, then uh, for, for for customers in Europe, then that makes us uh, uncompetitive uh, if the WCO rates will apply. Um, one big sector will be the textile industry, uh, garment uh, industry, because duty uh, is typically 12% uh, when moving into the EU. So, uh, you know, there are some, some distinct um, distinct uh, industries where, you know, there, there will be some real challenges, which is why really either a transition uh, extension or uh, the FTA, FTA uh, being implemented, the free trade agreement, really are imperative before we actually do leave uh, Europe uh, lock, stock and barrel. Yeah. Uh, on just on a, as a side subject, I hear that around 80% of businesses are not proactive on compliance matters. What's the implications of this and how can they correct it? In terms of compliance, yes, I mean, it's not, um, uh, yes, it's quite common that a lot of businesses don't really understand what they should be doing in terms of importing and exporting. Uh, from a compliance perspective, um, the really the main consequences are not only could HMRC come and assess for uh, tax um, for exporters, the main area is uh, holding export, the export evidence, show the goods have left the UK, uh, and, and then uh, 21 years of being a consultant, it's still uh, surprises me how many businesses don't hold the right evidence um, to show the goods left the UK. Well, the consequence there is if HMRC say, well, you don't hold the, the right evidence, uh, that becomes due. At twenty percent on those exports, wow. uh, which obviously is going to wipe out the profit margin, which is quite a big thing. And yeah. then for importers, uh, I know we're, we're talking a lot about exports, but importers, uh, if businesses aren't compliant, then there's duty, VAT, and penalties likely to accrue. So it's very important that businesses do consider compliance, and this is where we do a lot of work with uh, with both importers and exporters and helping them understand what they should be doing and, and, and helping them implement processes that uh, that actually achieve that. Mm. It, it's said that in the UK, there's around about 400,000 businesses who could export but aren't. Okay, so I'm one of them. So let's suggest I, I want to get my act together and seize the export opportunity. How will the customs people help me if I'm novice to export? Where we can help you is actually understand what you need to do to physically export to actually get goods through customs. Uh, and, and the, the documentary requirements, both uh, uh, for export paperwork and commercial paperwork, to show uh, those exports uh, have, have occurred and, and actually make those happen. We also work a lot with freight forwarders who can sort of assist on the actual practical side, so we can sort of introduce people to uh, uh, to, to working work with the right partners. Uh, and also, I'd always advise taking advice from people like the UK Export Finance Department and UK. Mm. Um, trade and industry because there's a lot of information the government does give out on on, on, on sort of commercial aspects we can't really help with commercial aspects in terms of um, you know who to target and that kind of thing but certainly once uh, a business has export we can we can we can assist in actually making it happen excellent yeah I'm, I'm really glad to be chatting to a recognized and and expert company like yourself because one thing i did learn in my years of presenting for hmrc and that there are a lot of rogue export export agents around so let's get a bit technical now should we what is aeo it's different okay. types and what happens if i don't apply for aeo AEO is a, a authorised economic operator status. It's uh, the government's trusted trader, um, uh -huh. which uh, is made uh, managed by the last during uh, the run up uh, to what should have been Brexit last year, or what was Brexit in the end. Um, and what it actually does is it's, it's like a, a, an ISO equivalent for businesses that import and export, where it basically says, well, actually, uh, the way that you as a business handle imports and exports uh, is best in class. It's, it's actually something that recognises that standards you operate to are quite high. Um, in terms of the different types, there's two kinds of AEO. There's AEOC, which relates to customs, so it's how businesses deal with customs. Um, and then there's AEOS, which is security, and that's about the physical custody of goods, uh, how goods are moved uh, throughout the supply chain. And the purpose of AEO, when it came in about uh, 2008, 
is really to try and have secure supply chain. So it's really to sort of be able to say to to, to uh, customers or suppliers, look, actually, we are uh, of a higher standard. And where AOC is concerned, it's an interesting uh, concept because actually, um, in, in the 50 sort of odd AO projects we've been involved with, it's it really uh, looking at uh, compliance plus, I will call it, in terms of it's really what every business should be doing anyway. It's just a few sort of added whistles and bells. So, um, you know, it, it's something I, I always say every business should at least consider, uh, even even if they decide not to go for it, because it's about making informed decisions and it can really benefit a business by having it. Right. Okay, great. Uh, and and let, let's say, let's stay technical as well, because I've heard of something called TSP. What's that? Right. TSP is, is, is slightly redundant now. It, it's called the Transitional Simplified uh, Procedure, where what the government were looking to do in the event of a no-deal Brexit in terms of we left the, the EU without any kind of uh, deal at all, we actually have got a deal now because that's why we're in a transition period, it was a mechanism to actually help importers from Europe uh, not get held up at the ports. So it, the, the government were encouraging every business to apply for TSP because, it, it, in essence, what it meant was that rather than have to have lot, rather than, than to have to lodge uh, customs declarations at the port of entry, you could actually defer it to up to six months later. But as I say, that actually uh, is redundant now because we are, uh, if, if we leave, uh, whether we leave with a deal, without a deal, or whatever, um, there will be customs requirements at the ports. Uh, there are simplifications which uh, do allow later reporting, uh, but it will be a full uh, process called CF, CFSF, CFSP, the Customs Freight Simplified Procedure, which is sort of the, the daddy of TSP, shall we say, rather than <laughs> being, um, being the simplification. I can see why businesses need your help. So at what stage should, uh, if I'm deciding to export, should a business seek advice from the customs people? At what stage? Really, I mean, what, once a business has decided to export, has actually found some uh, found customers, before they uh, actually look to arrange shipping or, or, or really sort of actually, you know, push the button on, on sending goods out, it's, it's really planning to say, well, okay, what do we need to do? What cost do we need to, to factor in? Uh, for example, depending on the, the, uh, the terms of trade, uh, we want to sort of decide on how a business will actually uh, sell to a customer, be it X works or be it deliver duty paid, that there's a world of difference. So really, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say so early that, um, you know, we're, we're sort of too early, but it's almost like it, there's never a stage where it's too early. But really, if the business is, is, has got some firm uh, interest in, in selling, it, it, it is uh, worth discussing at that stage so that they actually get the best uh, outcome in terms of, um, how to export and, and really who's going to do what because it is understanding the whole supply chain. Mm -hmm. So really, any business seeking to export, we say, yeah, speak to us as early as you like and when we can assist. Yeah, uh, obviously we're going to have a lot of changes happening over the next year or so, continuous, and I hope we'll be able to pop back in and meet you a number of times as we as we make that that um, uncertain journey and you'll be able to ah. give us some clarification. So finally, David... Ah. I've got three wishes for you. It's fairy godmother time, you know, not, not pantomime yet, but third, fairy godmother time. You've got three wishes to give to UK exporters to help them be more successful. What are your three wishes? Well, three wishes uh, echo slightly what I said earlier, which is the three wishes are a free trade agreement with Europe, because that means that any trade that uh, we have of UK uh, originating goods, uh, will actually be duty free going into Europe. So that's that's a very important one. Uh, number two is simplifying uh, actually the declarations that are needed to uh, trade with Europe. Uh, if, if you think that for every export uh, from the UK that there'll be a declaration and there'll be one corresponding into Europe, uh, in going into Europe, so simplification, so that would be um, very well. And really just getting some clarity as soon as possible. The government has said, look into trying to find a position the June as to whether there'll be a free trade agreement, whether there'll be a transition period extension. But really, you know, we need them to meet that timetable so businesses do have a good six months to actually plan for, for the outcome of Brexit and, and do, do it in a way that it's, uh, as Mrs May kept saying, in orderly fashion. 
So that those are really the three main things I would uh, I would ask the government to do as soon as possible. Okay, I'll try my best to uh, to to make them come to reality for you. You know. There goes my fairy godmother, <laughs> pixie dust thing. Uh, David Miller, the customs people, um, I've thoroughly enjoyed the start of our conversations, which we hope will continue as we uh, take this um, exciting journey for UK businesses to really get behind export. As I want to encourage people to go along to thecustomspeople.com because you've got some great information on that site, which will again illustrates um, how good you are at the customs people. Thank you, David Miller. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Malcolm. Been a pleasure.